There's a glimmer of hope in Gaza. After months of fighting, there is talk of a ceasefire, a possible end to the war. And who's saying it? U.S. President Joe Biden. He's also given a timeline for clinching this deal by the end of the weekend, he says. It's great news for Gaza and the region, a massive political development. But guess how Joe Biden announced it? While having some ice cream. Well, I hope by the beginning of the weekend. I mean, the end of the weekend. At least my, my, my national security advisor tells me that we're close. We're close. We're not done yet. And my hope is by next Monday, we'll have a ceasefire. So it's not done yet, but the talks in Paris have made progress. Four parties are involved here. Israel, the United States, Qatar and Egypt. Hamas does not attend directly. Instead, they relay messages via Qatar and Egypt. Last Friday, these parties met in Paris. They agreed on a draft ceasefire proposal. The complete details are not out yet, but most reports talk about five points. Number one, the fighting will be paused for 40 days. This will include the holy month of Ramadan. Number two, Israel will release 400 Palestinian prisoners. Number three, Hamas will free 40 Israeli hostages, mostly women, children and the elderly. So that's one hostage released for 10 Palestinian prisoners. And number four, 500 aid trucks will be allowed to enter Gaza every day. So hospitals will be rebuilt, shelters will be restocked, and thousands of tents will be pitched for the displaced. And finally, number five, Gazans will be allowed to return to the north. Just one exception, though. Men of military age cannot return. Reports say Israel's cabinet has already approved this proposal. The next step is for Hamas to agree. Some key meetings are being lined up in Doha and Cairo. You're hearing that Hamas will also attend these meetings. Maybe afterwards we'll have a decision. So that's the news from Gaza. Let's now shift to the West Bank. Their entire government has just stepped down. You see, the West Bank is ruled by the PA, the Palestinian Authority, PA. And its prime minister has announced his resignation. He says Palestine needs a new government based on consensus. This decision comes based on the political, security and economic developments that are related to the offensive on our people in Gaza and the unprecedented escalation in the West Bank and Jerusalem and to what our people and Palestinian cause are facing, as well as our political system that had been aggressively attacked in an unprecedented manner. The resignation has been passed on to Mahmoud Abbas. He is the Palestinian president. Abbas may ask him to serve on as a caretaker, but logistics aside, what's the message here? It's the message of reform. The PA has been under pressure to change. The last elections in the West Bank were held way back in 2006. Mahmoud Abbas himself was elected back in 2005. He's 88 years old now. Compare that to the people that he represents. The average Palestinian age is just 19. So the movement has changed from the 20th century. Young Palestinians have different ideas. The PA was under Western pressure to change. Hence the Prime Minister's resignation. But don't expect overnight reform. Chances are this will be a long and exhausting process. What about Israel? Do they have such long-term plans? Well, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has released his post-war plan. It talks about replacing Hamas with civilians. Basically, Netanyahu wants local representatives to rule Gaza. He also says Gaza must be demilitarized and de-radicalized. But these are very tough goals. Some might say worrying as well. Because according to this plan, Israel will have security control over Gaza and the West Bank. In the long term, that is not sustainable. Palestinians would never accept it. So Netanyahu's post-war plan is worrying. So are his attacks on Lebanon. Israel is now striking deep inside Lebanese territory. On Monday, they hit Baalbek. It's a stronghold of the Hezbollah group. It's also 75 kilometers from the border with Israel. Video showed plumes of smoke and Israeli fighter jets. Take a look at this. So far, Israeli attacks have been limited to the south, but this was eastern Lebanon, which means that Israel is escalating. The question is why? Maybe Netanyahu wants to keep the war alive to stay in office, or maybe these are preemptive strikes. Whatever the reason, it is worrying. It took almost 140 days to reach a tentative ceasefire deal in Gaza. The last thing we need is a war at the other front.